In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to make the most of your meetings at the design studio or meetings with your custom builders interior design team. There's a lot of information out there on how best to prepare for this meeting, but we're going to give you advice on what we've seen work really well for our clients over the years. The first thing is probably the most obvious, and I'm sure everyone watching this video is already doing this, but the custom home industry is a very visual industry, and saving your favorite inspiration photos of styles you like is incredibly helpful in getting the final look you want for your custom home. No matter how exceptional your designer may be, the most challenging part of their job is to translate what they hear and see into their clients' individual styles. To do that, we ask clients to come to the design meeting with photographs, ideas from websites, and access to their Pinterest and house accounts to help the design team get a sense of their design style. Large three-ring binders used to be a common sight at early design meetings, filled with photos from magazines, pictures from friends and family's homes, and even pictures of beautiful hotel rooms where they'd stayed. But now, just about everything is done electronically. At the initial design meeting, you will be showing each photo to the designer telling them what you like about each of the individual photos. Here are some helpful guidelines to follow. There are many places available to find inspiration photos, but our clients tend to go to Pinterest first, then House, then a myriad of other sources, including design magazines, the web, etc. What's good about Pinterest and House is they allow you to create a folder for each specific area of the home, from kitchens to staircases, mudrooms, family rooms, and so on. Creating a folder for each area will help you organize your thoughts and ideas more effectively. For other photos you randomly find and save, just create folders on your computer, matching the folders that you've created on Pinterest and your house account. It is so important to describe exactly what you like in each photo. So when you first see the photo, write notes on exactly what appeals to you in that particular design. I can't tell you how many times our clients look at a photo that are missing the notes and say, I can't remember why I saved this photo. So be sure to take great notes for each photo. For example, for the area of kitchens, you may want to make a file name something like this, kitchens love the backsplash, where kitchen is the area, love the backsplash is what you like in the photo. Going through the photos with your designer is what I call the style transfer. By going through each one and describing exactly what you like in each photo, the designers will pick up on your taste and your preferences and even will start finishing your sentences as they better understand exactly what look you're trying to achieve. Make sure that the designer has an extensive checklist that they're working from. If you don't have a good checklist, there will be things missing. And there's nothing more frustrating than spending your time making selections just to find out you have to go back to the design center and select items you've missed. Don't assume every designer is working from a checklist. Most do, but some don't. So double check before you get started. Make sure you clearly understand that the items you're selecting are within your budget. The builder should have a program with the designer where this is clearly known by the designer. Even if the designer doesn't know the exact price of a particular item, they should know if they are within your price range of your allowance. And you also want to understand how upgrades work. I don't know many people that stay within the standards program of the builder, no matter how high-end the builder is. This is your custom home, and there's always going to be areas that you want to spend above the standard package that your builder's provided. Don't let this frustrate you. It's very normal. But if your budget's tight and it's important to stay within your budget, make sure you know what's an upgrade and what isn't. You don't want to get frustrated by selecting items that are above your allowance amount and later have to go back to the designer and reselect lesser expensive items. This is especially hard if you already fall in love with the upgrade items that are out of your price range. And if you're stuck and unsure about which selection would be better, a great way to fix this is to ask the designer which one they prefer. Then ask them why they selected that particular one. I find this very educational and extremely helpful. I think I've learned more about design through the process of asking why they prefer one over another one than anything else I've learned over the years. You may want to take photos of each of the selections you've chosen, grouped together by room if that's an option. 
This not only helps you remember what you selected after you leave the design center, but also allows you to rethink a particular selection without the pressure of every one of the rooms staring over you. Your design studio appointment can be pretty long. However, the time will seem to just fly by. Some choices you'll be able to make pretty quickly, where others will require to think a bit, weigh your options, and consult your budget. If you need more time to make a decision, take it. Don't rush through and end up settling for something you don't actually like because you feel like you needed to move on. So work to make sure that you're happy with all of your choices. On the flip side, don't obsess over every decision, trying to make sure that everything is exactly perfect. Do your homework ahead of time and you should have no problem making selections when it's time. One last thing. I love interior designers and there's no way that I could design the interior of a home without them. They're incredible at what they do. But you do need to understand most of them are artistic and some can be very opinionated. This can create a couple things you need to watch out for. One, they can sometimes want to include wild colors or patterns that aren't your style. Again, they are very creative and artistic and you need to make sure that you personally love the items you select. So don't be pushed into something you don't like. Number two, make sure that they're listening to you and not trying to create their design style in your house, but creating something that reflects your own personalized design style. Let's do a quick recap since there's so much good information here. Create folders for each area. Write notes on every photo you save. Conduct a style transfer. Make sure your designer uses a checklist. Understand which items are within your budget. If you're unsure, ask your designer. Take photos of each of the selections you've chosen grouped together. Be sure to get plenty of rest the night before your appointment. If you need more time to make a decision, take it. Don't be pushed into something you don't like. And lastly, make sure your designers are listening to you. As always, thank you for watching and we truly hope this video helps you on your home building journey. If you found this video helpful, please leave us a like and subscribe to see more of our videos.